Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Clutchcast. I'm Matt Schroyer and as usual I'm here with my project car, the BMW Z3 Roadster. In a previous episode I dropped the front subframe to have it reinforced, sandblasted, and powder coated. Now in this episode I'm reinstalling the front subframe with some modest but effective suspension upgrades. So let's dive right in. First I installed solid rubber motor mounts to the subframe which are a slight improvement over the stock fluid filled mounts because they deflect less and let the motor apply more force directly to the driveline at the cost of some extra vibration transferred to the chassis. However, I would not recommend anything harder than solid rubber for anything that would be driven on the street. Then I installed a set of new Miley heavy duty front control arms to the subframe. Because the inner ball joints will rotate in their sockets when torqued, you'll need to use a hex key on the end of the threaded post to keep it from turning, which means you won't be able to use a socket and torque wrench, and will have to use your best judgment on when you've torqued it down properly. With the control arms attached to the subframe, it was time to install the control arm bushings onto the control arms, and for that, I had 80A Durameter Turner Motorsport Centered Polyurethane Front Control Arm Bushings. Why polyurethane instead of stock rubber control arm bushings? Well, polyurethane has less deflection than rubber, meaning your control arms are going to hold the road a little better and improve your handling at the cost of a ride that is slightly more harsh. You can pick harder materials like a 90 Durameter Polyurethane or even 100% Delrin but the harder you go, the more unsuitable the car becomes for the street. A hardness of 80 durameters seems like a safe starting point, but keep in mind you'll probably have to lube those bushings every year to stop them from squeaking. Now to install the control arm bushings, you need to strip the paint off the end of the new control arm with sandpaper and a wire wheel, and hammer the new bushings on using an impact socket that can clear the post on the control arm and yet totally cover the Delrin center sleeve at the same time. For me, a 22 millimeter socket worked very well. With the subframe assembled, it was time to lift the assembly back into place. The key to get everything aligned was to get the motor mounts slotted into the motor first, then thread the motor mount nuts on, and then shift the subframe and motor assembly to the chassis of the car, and bolt the subframe to the chassis, before going back to the motor mounts and torquing those nuts down to spec. With the subframe bolted into place, it was on to fastening the front suspension back together. I don't have footage of this, but to stop the outer ball joints from rotating while you're torquing down the top nut, you can apply pressure directly to the bottom of the ball joint using a floor jack. With the suspension reconnected, it was on to reinstalling the steering rack. I did find that it was a lot easier to install and align the rack with the tie rods not attached. Remember to use the marks you created earlier to align the steering column spline with the split joint on the steering rack. And hopefully your steering column was locked into place before you move those two. After the rack was installed, I installed the new tie rods and bellows using the old tie rods as a template for how long to extend the outer end of the tie rod. You might notice the aftermarket power steering lines and power steering fluid cooler fastened to the rack here, which is part of a chase base system. Even if you're not replacing those power steering lines, you'll need to tighten them back up and go through the proper procedure to fill and bleed the power steering system. Here I'm also using fresh OEM rubber sway bar bushings, which is a good thing to do while you're in there. And last, I installed some fresh OEM rubber sway bar end links, and along the way I learned it's a lot easier to attach the bracket to the lower control arm first before moving the end link into place and then bolting the whole assembly back down. Now that's it as far as reassembly is concerned, but after you do a massive suspension job like that, it's important to have your car taken in 
and have it aligned. Now, if you have any aftermarket springs installed like I did, I really recommend that you take your car into an alignment specialist because maybe not all BMW dealerships will be eager to align your car if you've taken it out of factory spec. However, my local BMW dealership, that'd be Jackie Cooper BMW in Edmond, were kind enough to take my car in and try to get it aligned. I did let them know up front that my car had Kony adjustable shocks and H&R lowering springs, which would bring the camber out of spec. And I was fine with that, but I was most concerned about getting the toe aligned as part of the alignment procedure. In other words, I wanted them to make sure that my wheels were pointed ahead in unison as straight as possible through alignment. And here's the results. Thankfully, uh, they uh, printed them out for me, but uh, here they are. Now, as you can see on the front wheels, the camber was an even from left to right, and there was excess toe on both sides, and the steering was off center. And on the rear, the camber also was an even. But after adjustment, now I have very close to negative 1.6 degrees of camber on the front, about negative 2.9 degrees in the rear with some slight positive toe all around and dead on steering. Overall, I'm very happy with the changes, although I do notice slightly more vibration at idle. But I also felt that steering become much more reactive and I noticed that uh, the car would point a little bit more directly without hesitation when I wanted it to. That's gonna be it for this video, but I do have two more videos that I'm going to post, hopefully as part of this uh, front suspension rebuild and upgrade. That includes a video where I remove the oil pan and inspect the oil pump nut, and also a video detailing the Chase Bay's power steering upgrade. So that's it for now. I wanna thank you for watching, and we'll see you down the road.